Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at the product rule and the quotient rule, and we're going to use those to develop some more trig derivatives. So let's just get after this. Product rule. If you have the derivative of a product, uh, a function times another function, the product rule states that the answer will be the first function times the derivative of the second, fg prime, plus the second function times the derivative of the first, plus gf prime. So that is the formula. Let's just take a look at this. I've got y equals x cubed cosine x minus 2 sine x. I'm going to invoke the quotient rule on the first part, x cubed cosine x. So y prime is going to equal. I'm going to do the quotient rule, I'm sorry, the product rule on x cubed cosine x, and then I don't need the product rule for 2 sine of x. We already have a rule, a constant multiple rule that allows us to just leave that there. So my product rule is going to be on the x cubed and the cosine x. So I'm going to treat my x cubed like f, and I'll treat my cosine x like g. So here we go. The rule is the first function, x cubed, times the derivative of the second. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then plus the second function, which would be cosine x, times the derivative of the first. And we know that the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. So I have used the product rule on x cubed cosine x. So I've taken the derivative of that part. Now I'm going to write minus 2 cosine x. We did not have to use the product rule with a constant in front of a function. We already know that that constant can just sit there and we can take the derivative of the second function. That is the derivative of that y equals. That's your y prime. We are not going to simplify this at all. We're just going to leave it like that statement. There will be enough algebra later where we will have to simplify and, and use that later on. So don't, you know, don't be sad that we're not simplifying right now. All right, so let's take a look at the quotient rule. The quotient rule is a little more complicated because it still stays a quotient. Um, and so here it is. It is the bottom function times the derivative of the top, gf prime, minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom, minus fg prime. And this is all over the bottom squared. There's a little a little wrap that goes along with this, and I'm not going to do it here. I'll do it in class for you guys tomorrow. So just ask me about it. There's a little uh, a little math ditty, if you will. So, uh, but it's uh, the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So let's take a look at how that looks. Here I have a quotient sine of x and x cubed. So sine will be like my f, and x cubed will like will be my g. So it's the bottom function x cubed times the derivative of the top, cosine x. There's the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. So it's sine x times 3x squared. Then this is all over the bottom squared. So we'll just put x cubed in parentheses and put a squared there. Of course that's x to the sixth, but I'm not interested in simplifying right now. And you could probably do some factoring or whatever, but you know, have at it. We're not doing it right now. Um, I would strongly recommend, however, that you not apply the quotient rule when you don't have to. We did an example a couple of days ago about what to do if there's a monomial in the bottom. Monomial means one term, and I would strongly recommend that you separate this instead of using the quotient rule. So I'm going to write this as x squared over x to the, now the fourth root of x means x to the one fourth. It's power over root, so there's the fourth root of x plus two over x to the one fourth. So you can separate it, and now we can simplify. We know to subtract exponents whenever we have like bases, so I'll think about two as eight fourths. So eight fourths minus one fourth gives me x to the seven fourths plus 2x to the negative 1 fourth. So I have rewritten my problem uh, and before I take the derivative. Separated it, simplified, now we'll take our derivative. So f prime is going to be 7 fourth x to the 3 fourths. When you do 7 fourths minus 1, you get 3 fourths. And then minus, we bring this 1 fourth down times 2, I'll just call it 2 fourths, x to the negative 5 fourths, and I'm going to stop right there. Again, I would strongly recommend you not use the quotient rule if you have a monomial in the bottom. 
I would also strongly recommend that you not use the quotient rule if you have just a constant in the numerator. If you have just a constant in the numerator, let's rewrite it as 9 fifths x to the negative 2. Again, I don't want to bring this 5 up here and call it 5 to the negative 2. I'm just going to bring the x to the top. So it's 9 fifths x to the negative 2. So y prime is going to be negative 18 fifths. When we bring this 2 down, we only multiply it times that 9. We also don't multiply it times the 5. That would be silly. And the math police would come along and write us a ticket, a math ticket. And then we would subtract one off that exponent and we get negative 18 fifths x to the negative 3. So let's go forward and use the quotient rule to figure out some derivatives of some other trig functions like tangent. I'm going to write tangent as sine of x over cosine of x. And it's a quotient. It's not a, I, I think I just yelled that, so if you jumped in your chair, I apologize. I'm sorry for yelling. You know. Anyway, so we're going to use the quotient rule, and it's going to be the bottom times the derivative of the top. So there's a bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. And it's our convention to write it cosine squared of x like this instead of cosine x all squared. But it means the same thing. Now here I am going to simplify this because that's a rather, um, I guess, ugly definition for the derivative of a tangent. I'd like to have a cleaner version, so I'm going to simplify this. So cosine times cosine is cosine squared. And then these two negatives make a plus sine squared. And of course, no one is going to think that we can cancel these cosine squares. No one thinks that. Nobody. Please tell me right now that you don't think that. Mr. G, I don't think that. I want to hear you say it. Say, Mr. G, I don't think you can cancel those cosine squares. Did you say it? Okay, good. Because you can't. Because of that plus sign. However, you should know that there is an identity on those little formula charts that cosine squared plus sine squared, of, as long as these angles are the same, that is equal to 1. And the reciprocal of cosine is secant. So we have developed a rule for the derivative of tangent. It is secant squared. That's just something you're going to have to remember unless you want to develop it yourself. All right, so let's take a look at the derivative of secant. I can write secant as 1 over cosine. And I'm going to use the quotient rule, even though I told you not to earlier when there's just a uh, constant up here. The quotient rule would require us to use the chain rule. I'm sorry, if we brought cosine x to the, up to the top, we'd have to use the chain rule, and you don't know that yet. So I'm going to use the quotient rule on this. So it's going to be the bottom times the derivative of the top. Now what's the derivative of 1? You know it. That's right. It's 0. The bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, all over the bottom squared. So let's simplify this again because we don't want that, that thing as our definition. Of course, 0 times cosine is gone. These two ne negatives make a positive sine of x over, and I'm going to write this as cosine x times 1 over cosine x. What I've done is I've separated this cosine squared into two cosines so that we can come up with an easier formula. And that would be that sine of x over cosine x is tangent of x. And 1 divided by cosine x is secant of x. So it's tangent times secant is going to be the derivative of secant. So let's write down what we know so far. The derivative of tangent is secant squared of x. The derivative of secant is, I'm going to write this in a... Um, T, S, T, yeah, let's write it in alphabetical order. Let's write it as secant first and then tangent. Of course, when we're multiplying, it, you can do it in either order. So I'm going to put this in alphabetical order because you usually see it written as secant x times tangent x. You can develop the other two in the same way. I'm just going to tell you what it works out to be. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared of x, and the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant of x times cotangent of x. And I'm going to write the other ones out here that we already know. The derivative of sine is cosine. And the derivative of cosine 
is negative sign. Now, these are things that you are going to have to remember and know. Something that helps me is that anytime you take the derivative of a trig function that starts with the letter C, like cotangent, cosecant, and cosine, anytime you take the derivative of a trig function that starts with the letter C, the answer is negative. All right, so let's take a look at a product rule example along with tangent x. I'm going to find the derivative of 3x squared tangent x, so this will be like my f and this will be like my g. Using the product rule, it's the first function times the derivative of the second. The derivative of tangent is secant squared plus the second function times the derivative of the first. The derivative of 3x squared is 6x. We're leaving it like that. Last example, uh, and this happens a lot, sometimes we are just given information and we have to find um, the derivative from that. Sometimes this is given in a table or just in a list. So we've got all of these pieces of data and we know that f is a product of g and h. So I have to find f prime of 2. So what I'm going to do is first of all come up with a formula for f prime of x. Since f is given to us as a product, I'm going to write out the formula for the derivative. It's the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. And now I have my formula for f prime of x, I can find what f prime of 2 is. That's going to be g of 2 times h prime of 2 plus h of 2 times g prime of 2. And I hope that we have all of those pieces of data up here. Let's see if we have it. g of 2 is given to me as 3. h prime of 2 is given to me as 5. h of 2 is, where is it? There it is. It's negative 1. And g prime of 2 is negative 4. Now I could technically leave my answer like this but if it was multiple choice, we'd have to go further. So 3 times 5 is 15. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. So that answer is 19. And I will see you guys tomorrow.